right, guys, a little update. Uh, it's been a good morning so far. We've seen a couple four deer total, uh, all bucks, and I just glassed up right there. I just glassed up the absolute unit we talked about yesterday. Yeah. And uh, it's the biggest. It's the biggest buck we've seen this trip. Um, he was at the top of my hit list, and then I got that four by five, which was near the top as well. So now, big daddy right here, big hoss, big, big bruiser, big El chief, Chapo, El chief, El Ch champ, <laughs> bud, skip, skip, skippy boy. Skippy boy, I like skippy boy. Yeah, skippy boy is nice. This guy right here, we're watching him, and uh, hopefully he puts him to bed later today. Yeah. Okay, guys, another update. Um, Nick is still on his stock. It's been a couple hours. It's um, 8.31, and he's got at least another couple hours to go. Um, the buck moved as Nick was getting in position, and the wind shifted. So now, from our original plan, I'm having Nick go all the way around the back side of that hill. He's going to come over the top where that rock bluff is, and the buck is in that juniper right there on the hill. So, it's literally a dream stock scenario. He's by himself. He's in a very recognizable tree, so it'll be easy to get to where he's at. And he's laying on the front side of the tree with the wind blowing this way, so the buck shouldn't be able to see him. It's pretty windy. Excellent wind. So, I mean, all the stars align. Hopefully everything pans out. I'll keep you guys updated. Okay guys, um, another update, Nick's doing a really good job, he is 86 yards from the buck, as you can see I got the glasses locked on the buck, and the buck is like right here, and Nick's like right there, 86 yards, he's got all day, that buck ain't, ain't gonna be moving, it's very hot out, and he's under a very thick juniper, so as long as sunlight doesn't hit him, he's not going to get up. So he should be, should be there all day. Um, so I'm excited. It's 9:46. So Coleman's been on this stock already for like two and a half, three hours, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's out there for another two or three hours. So I always tell people you got to take your time, go very slow. You don't need to rush. Everyone thinks like. A lot of newer hunters will think they got to get over there or the animal's going to be gone. You'll never see him again, but it's it's just not factual. you got time. They're not leaving unless they get bumped or they're nervous, so keep that in mind. I'll keep you guys updated. Go ahead and tell me what happened, Big Chief. Dude, it's hot. It is hot. Holy cow. I think it's like 95. Ooh. You look really cool, though. Yeah, that breeze coming through was nice. It's yeah. Just, it kept kind of... We're going to pick that up, by the way. Yeah, we don't litter. Yeah, yeah. Just kept kind of swirling. Um, so first of all, we're going to go up to this fence line. The wind was good to where I can make a stock up there. Right, Actually, no, right beneath was, that yeah. peak. Yeah, so he's in that little, that little uh, ravine going up right there. Wind changed. Talked to James. Came up with a new game plan. Get around that side. Uh, so I had a hike. Back side of it. It's actually some pretty steep stuff, so... How to get around the backside, get up in between that saddle right there. Yeah, right between, between those things. rocks is where he came over. Um, James got eyes on me and kind of told me where the buck was. It's crazy now, I can really see yeah. the juniper yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, now you can see. Yeah. So as soon as I crest that hill, and I mean, you wouldn't believe it, those junipers stand out pretty, pretty, pretty good on that hillside. But when you're up top, it's like hard that, to you see don't them, yeah. how steep it is. It's much harder to see them, so yeah. I literally just saw the top of the juniper. And James said it's the closest one, so I was like, okay, that has to be it. So I just made a plan, started stalking down, try to stay behind coverage. It's hot. It is very hot. <laughs> it is hot. hot. So, uh, so I just creep my way down. James said he can get 40, 30 to 40 yards. Sit tight. So I literally got right above that juniper. Yeah, I right got there. 40 yards. And I had a couple shooting lanes, but my shooting lanes were only if he was going to funnel up. Um which I kind of, it was either he's going to funnel up to the left or funnel up to the right. And I had two shooting lanes over here and I had a bunch of shooting lanes on the left side. Um, and we've kind of been seeing him grazing up. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he just took that fence line. So I started, actually I was at 40 yards exactly. I started coming down a little bit more to get in some better shooting lanes. And I saw him just kind of sitting there itching himself, flickering. 
And uh, so I actually got to about 35 yards and he stood up, still had no idea I was there. He just stood up and started going to his, I don't know, I guess another bed spot. Yeah, yeah, so he started Probably moving. He got up and he didn't, he had no clue Nick was there, but he started milling away, unfortunately. that That's what I always say. I mean, you were 100% perfect, but you gotta get lucky too. Yeah. And sure. he just unfortunately went the wrong way. And I saw him, I saw him for a very short window. If I would have stood up where I was, I probably could have got a shot, but think about it. That was a very short window. That was probably three seconds he was in that spot, maybe. Yeah. And it's going to take me longer to be sneaky and stand up, draw my, you know, range on my, I knew it was 40 yards. Draw, you know, stand up, draw my bow. I, I, it wouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah. It would not have happened. And, so, uh, you know, what's crazy is that stock, that was a five-hour stock. Yeah. Five hours. So when I say stuff takes time and commitment, I knew he'd be burning up because I've been in that same spot um, as him before. And it's just, that's what you got to do. And he did have the buck beat, you know, it was just the buck got lucky and chose the right path to yeah. move away. That's all there is to it. And I tried to grin. So, you know, me and James talked again, kind of told me where he was going up towards those dead junipers. And uh, so I started making my way across, but as soon as he said, you know, where he was, the wind was already at my back, literally yeah. going that way. The and wind I was wasn't like, good. Shit. So at that time, at that point, I was kind of just living on a prayer. Yeah, and then I, I looked and I saw the buck kind of bound away uphill. So I don't think he was ever super scared. He just smelled something and, and bounded out of there. But yeah. you did That's a good nice. job, man. Okay. Really good job. Yeah, so thing. we'll get it done. Oh, yeah. Guess what? Don't forget that water. I'm picking oh. it up right oh. now. That's a good Let's go some cold water. Let's do it. So finger bang, chicken bang. All right, guys, um, I am reviewing the Bang Energy Blue Raz. It's I've already a, had it. It's, it's going to be a 1 to 10 scale. Here we go. We're so we're such hipsters. It's not as good as the cotton candy. Uh, cotton candy was, I'm going to say an 8. This is like a 6.5. It's good. Not as good. Cotton candy is fuego. See you in the next clip. Bye.